again, my good people. During the Christmas holidays, I'm ignoring all of the media forecasts about the challenges we face in 2018. After all, our ancestors faced very similar challenges. For example, Cicero, a Roman statesman and author, wrote in 55 BC, the budget must be balanced. How often have you heard that? Cicero would be shocked at our national debt, over $20 trillion. And that doesn't include state and local debt. And Livy, a Roman historian in the first century, objected to the moral rot and slipping standards of conduct in society then. So the biblical maxim rings true. There's nothing new under the sun. So during the Christmas holidays, I'm going to enjoy family and friends and forget about the challenges we face in 2018. So what does the word of God have to say to us today? The word carries us back in our imaginations 3,000 years to the days of King Herod. King David in Jerusalem. And David's life in many ways was like a soap opera. He was a man of virtue as well as vice. All you have to do is read the book of Kings. And David here wants to build a temple for the Ark of the Covenant that symbolizes the Ark, that symbolizes the very presence of God among his people. And the prophet Nathan, through an oracle, reminds David that everything that he has is a gift from God. After all, David once herded sheep. Now he's a great king. And then the prophet proclaims that God will build a house for David, a dynasty that will endure forever and give him an heir, an allusion to the Messiah. The author here challenges us as he challenged David to thank God for all that we have. Everything that we have is a gift from God, and through these gifts are meant for others. Some of you may recognize the name of Albert Schweitzer. He was an early 20th century theologian and musician making extraordinary contributions in both disciplines. But then he decided to become a medical doctor to serve people in the wilderness of West Africa. And with a medical degree in hand, Schweitzer established a hospital in Gabon in 1913. He was later awarded a Nobel Peace Prize for his humanitarian work. But asked for his motto, Schweitzer's answer was service. And he wrote, let this word accompany each of you throughout your life. Let it be before you as you seek your way in the world. May it be recalled to your minds if you are ever tempted to forget it was set it aside. It will not always be a comfortable companion, but it will always be a faithful one, and it will lead to happiness. Albert Schweitzer indeed lived a life of service, a God-centered, other-centered life. His philosophy of reverence for life extended to his fellow human beings and to all God's creatures. The point is, our gifts from God are meant for others. And service is a wonderful companion to have throughout our life. Paul, here in his letter to the Christian community at Rome, sings a hymn of praise to God. Paul, a devout Jew, says that God's special favor, that is, Jesus Christ, has come through ancient Israel to all people. And to God alone, we owe worship. Paul challenges us to recognize who we are, fragile, mortal creatures in the presence of an awesome, 
almighty God, accountable to God for how we live and what we do. In the gospel according to Luke, we have the annunciation scene. Somehow or other, the power of God broke into the life of Mary at Nazareth, asking Mary to believe that she would bear within herself a special child. And because Mary was attuned to the presence of God in her daily life, because she was a woman of extraordinary faith, she replied simply, May it be done to me as you say. And these words are easy to say when everything is going our way, but they are not so easy to say when what is happening to us is the opposite of what we want to happen. Perhaps it's something we wanted but now won't have, such as a particular promotion, perhaps a relationship now broken or a life-threatening disease. Such turns in life can test our trust in God's unconditional love for us. But Mary's yes gave us the Christmas story, the greatest love story ever told. That story, as it has come down to us, tells of a baby in, in a trough, it tells of a mother holding her child in her arms as her husband Joseph stands close by. It tells of angels singing in the sky, shepherds running over the hillside to tell the child how much they love him. Yes, it tells of a star guiding the magi over the wilderness and on to their knees to worship this Christ child. Centuries ago, St. John summed up this magnificent story in a single line. The Word became flesh. Yes, John wrote for us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and through Him all things came to be, and apart from Him nothing came to be. And He was the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh, and made his dwelling among us. Christmas means not simply God in Bethlehem centuries ago, but God within each one of us. We bear within ourselves Emmanuel, God with us, by virtue of the waters of baptism. And wherever we gather together in his name as we do now, before the word of God and around the table of the Lord, the altar, God is there. Paul summed up very magnificently centuries ago what is happening to us. We are by grace what Jesus Christ is by nature, sons and daughters of God our Father. And that is God's gift to us on Christmas Day. I close with a thought about a little story by the American writer O. Henry, titled The Gift of the Magi, and many of you probably had to read that in school. It's about a young married couple, almost penniless. To summarize, Della sells her hair to buy a gift for Jim. Jim's present to her is a set of expensive combs for her hair and her gift to Jim, a chain for his grandfather's watch, which he has sold to buy her combs. But both are happy. O. Henry concludes with this quote, two foolish children who most unwisely sacrificed for each other the greatest treasures they had, but of all who give and receive gifts, such as they are the wisest. Everywhere they are the wisest, they are the Magi. May we, like the Magi, bring the Christ child our greatest gift, ourselves, and our commitment to a deeper life of discipleship with Jesus. We may not be able to give our money, but we certainly can give our time and talent to help others. I truly believe that service 
generosity with our time and talent refreshes the soul. And until Jesus comes again in great power and glory at the end time, our purpose in life is to continue doing all the good we can for all the people we can as long as ever we can. Helping those who doubt to find faith. Those who despair to find hope. Those who are weak to find courage. Those who are sick to find health. Those who are sad and depressed to find joy. Those who wander to find their way back to God. And those who are angry to find a way to let go of their anger and find calm. And those who are dying to find mercy and peace with God forever. May the Lord bless and keep each and every one of you.